how can we use this information to understand Mendel's results? Since the F1 generation plants were heterozygous for the flower color gene, half of the sperm produced had the purple flower allele and half had the white flower allele. By the same token, half of the eggs carried the purple flower allele while the other half carried the white flower allele. For a particular fertilization, both the sperm and the egg could carry the purple flower allele. This would result in a purple flowered plant with genotype dominant P, dominant P. For a particular fertilization, the sperm could carry the purple flower allele while the egg could carry the white flower allele. This would result in a purple flowered plant with genotype dominant P, recessive P. For a particular fertilization, the sperm could carry the white flower allele while the egg could carry the purple flower allele. This would result in a purple flowered plant with genotype dominant P, recessive P. Note that the source of the alleles does not affect the phenotype. Phenotypically, dominant P, recessive P, and recessive P, dominant P are the same. The convention is to list the dominant allele first. For a particular fertilization, both the sperm and the egg could carry the white flower allele. This would result in a white flowered plant with genotype recessive P, recessive P. This type of analysis can be simplified in a Punnett square. This method is used to predict the probabilities of each genotypic and phenotypic combination. Let's start with our F1 plant again. We know that it is heterozygous for this particular trait, dominant P, recessive P. Since it is heterozygous, half of the sperm will contain dominant P, half will contain recessive P. The same goes for the eggs. To set up our Punnett square, we need to know the genotypes of the parents. In this example, the parents are identical since we will have self-fertilization. We can place the possible sperm along the side. Again, half of the sperm will contain dominant P. The other half will contain recessive P. Similarly, half of the eggs will contain dominant P, and the other half will contain recessive P. Now that we've set up the Punnett square, the rest is basically mechanical. Each of the four squares represents a fertilization event with the sperm on the left of the square and the egg on top of the square.